lecture for chapter three that looks at analyzing the industry and your potential target market for your business and how to develop a comprehensive marketing plan. You will look at current trends, we'll also look at norms and standards for the industry, and also the demographics and psychographics of our target market to position um, your business against the competition. First, we're going to look at some reasons for a marketing plan. And without a solid marketing plan, your company will not succeed. You need to identify your target market and ensure that it is big enough of a market to make a profit, which I've kind of already mentioned that before in previous chapters. And one way to do this is by doing research on the market and understanding the needs, the wants, and the habits of your target customer. And market research analysis will impact your decisions throughout the planning process for your business. It'll affect such things as who you should hire, the type of merchandise you should carry, and even the best possible location. The marketing plan will begin with an overview of the industry, then it will go will also look at the growth potential of the industry and trends that can lead to opportunities or limitations within the industry. You will also profile the target market and then analyze the competition. And after you've done that, then you'll define the pricing and market penetration strategy that you're going to use to meet your target market. And last, successful entrepreneurs identify the needs and gaps in the marketplace and find ways to fulfill those needs and gaps, which we also talked about this um, in a previous lecture of finding, you know, where's your competitor lacking and you can come in and fill that gap for your consumer. So looking at defining your market research. Market research is an organized effort to find out information about an industry, the market, and its customers. And for this class, our industry is defined as all companies supplying similar or related products or services. And market research identifies trends and provides answers to how many con consumers respond to products and services, how they buy, when they buy, what they want, need, or believe. It also looks at, market research looks to make sure that your market is big enough um, to ensure you'll make a profit. Market research also helps businesses in developing their marketing campaigns to meet the specific wants and needs of their target customer. It also identifies opportunities to turn ideas into a real business. And it also identifies obstacles such as your competition and how to gain a competitive advantage. And another thing with market research, you're going to do research all the time continually even after you start your business because the markets, the trends, and your customers are going to be constantly. And once again, a big piece of your market research is also looking at your competitor and looking at what they're good at and what they're not good at and how you're going to deal with both of them. Now looking at the steps to market research, there's a systematic approach that allows entrepreneurs to take a focused approach to conducting research and the way you're going to do that is you're going to follow these nine steps. And you're, you're going to have to do actually a lot of market research to complete your marketing plan, which is what we'll start on for our assignment for Chapter 3. So um, once you look at the assignment, you'll see that I've provided a lot of different um, resources for how to research and find the information that you're looking for. And you can also even speak to Cynthia Henry in the library. She specializes in our department, and she's great at helping you find any research that you're looking for. Now we're going to go through each of the nine steps that you're going to use to develop your market plan. So first step is to outline the scope of what you want to know. For this step, you're going to need to narrow what you need to know and what you need to analyze by understanding the following areas. So first you want to look at trends. And they will either have a positive or a negative impact on your business concept. Next, you need to know who your customer is and what they want to ensure that you have the right product and service to meet their needs. Then you need to determine where the customer will make purchases. Are they going to make them online, in-store, 
or through other distribution channels. So examples of other distribution channels would be like when you go to a party, such as the 31 party, or another example would be Jamberries, where you buy them also through parties. Next, you need to learn how much your customer will pay for your product and service and what they perceive as value. So this is where you're going to look at the prices of your competitors to determine how you're going to price your product. Also, you need to think about how will the customer learn about you. Are they going, what do they use most to find out about um, other retailers? Do they use social media? Do they go online? Do they use radio, television, direct mail? So what is the best way to reach your specific customer? Also, you need to understand how the competition will react to your business. And are they going to change their pricing? Um, you need to look at how location compared to them and also their distribution. And finally, you want to look at how products will reach your customers by looking at supply chains and methods of distribution. And this would be, you know, in-store, online, group parties, trunk shows, how are you um, going to reach your customer. So step two is where you're going to identify the sources of information. And when you look at research data, you um, can either collect primary data or secondary data. And you're going to use this data to make decisions and then back up those decisions that you make. And primary data is data you obtain firsthand through different forms of research, such as mystery shopping, observations, surveys, interviews, and focus groups. And if you want to see a little bit more about each of these, you can look on page 49, box 3.2 of your textbook, and it'll explain these a little more. Um, in this class, we're mainly going to use secondary research just because we don't have time for you to go out and do surveys and interviews and focus groups. Um, we actually do that in uh, the retailing research course if you haven't taken it yet. And then the, mis the only thing you will probably do is you may do some mystery shopping just to learn about your competitor and to learn like their pricing, what they carry, what kind of services they offer. Also, to do primary data, it tends to be time consuming and quite costly. So that's another reason that we're mainly just going to stick to secondary data. So next is secondary data. And this is data that has already been collected and it's less expensive and time consuming to access. And this data usually focuses on industry trends, customer demographics, and buying behavior. And if you look on page 50, box 3.3 of your book, there's a list of secondary sources that they've provided. And I've also compiled a list of secondary sources, and it's under um, the Chapter 3 assignment as one of your links. And then there's also a link from Cynthia Henry from the library on how to, um, different ways to research to find things. And some good sources are business magazines to find secondary data, and there's, you can get data from Forbes, stores, Women's Wear Daily. Some other places to find um, basic demographic info is census data. Um, you can also use through the library the database LexisNexis. Also, the Small Business Administration for the U.S. is a great way to, um, there's a lot of resources there that you can use. And then also the Small Business Association at Texas Tech. I provided you a link for that too, and they have some resources on their website. And one thing about secondary data is we really want to make sure that we don't use data that's more than 10 years old, just because it's not going to be current enough to really be what's going on in the industry. If you can stick with data from like 2012 to now, that's actually going to be better than if you go, you could go all the way to 2010, but besides that, I would try to stick with data um, within that time frame and no later than 10 years. So our next step in our marketing plan is to research the industry, and we're going to do this to determine current trends, consumer behaviors, and growth potential. Then you also want to look at the industry history, what's been going on in the industry, how stable is it, what opportunities have you seen in the industry. You want to look at the current size of the industry. You can find those numbers online. 
And you also want to look at the um, opportunities and evaluate those. Some other things that you want to look at are seasonal buying patterns. You want to look at the economy and where the industry is heading. You can also look at um, industry suppliers, apparel manufacturers, trend forecasting, trade publications, and retail operations. So a lot of times you can find a lot of good info even in um, big companies' annual reports. And if you look on page 52 of your book, figure 3.1, it shows a model who makes up the fashion industry um, and who all is included in that industry and the different areas that you could look into. So step four, you need to identify and understand the market. And it's important to understand the national and international economic conditions and cycles that will affect your business. So, for example, during poor economic times, resale and discount stores outperform other forms of retail. So, for the last few years, we've actually seen improved sales in discount stores and resale stores. And there's been a lot more even resale chains open up. Um, also, in an economic upswing, you see more luxury items and expensive home furnishings tend to do very well during economic upswings. And in this step, you need to identify the consumer group or cohort group that you want to target. And um, so your cohort group could be anything from baby boomers, baby boomers, Generation Y, Generation X. You just need to figure out um, for your business who are you most likely to target and who will um, want your product that you have to offer. Also, some other publications to look at to learn about the different um, consumer groups. You can look at American Demographics, which is part of Advertising Age. You can look at Marketing Today. And you can also look at the magazine Sales and Marketing Management. So, looking at step five, once you've researched the industry and the market, then you need to de determine your target market. And your target market is the customer most likely to purchase your products or services. And your target market is based on a set of characteristics through research and analysis. And these are demographic characteristics such as age, gender, education, occupation, race, income, nationality, religion, and geographic location. And the easiest way to find this information is through the census data that you can find online. And besides demographics, you also want to look at psychographics. And these are your lifestyle and personality characteristics of consumers. And they look at how consumers spend their time, their interests, their hobbies, their values, their behaviors, and their emotions. And the reason you want to look at these is because a woman with three children and a woman with no children have very different lifestyles and use very different products. And so you would want to determine who you're targeting and how you're going to target them. Um, another example would be if you look at the um, age cohort of the baby boomers, they're really worried about their health and um, they were retired and tend to have more money to burn than other generations. So they're good targets for high-end products that specifically look at improving your health. So you want to look at people's interests and hobbies and values and how you can relate that to your product and target your product toward one of their interests or their what they value. Some other things that you need to do under this step are to determine or narrow your target market. So you want to pick, are you just going to do males, females, or both? You need to pick an age range. You need to pick a geographic location. You need to kind of settle on occupations that fit within your target market. You also need to look at their likes, their dislikes, what entertainment they like, what image they're trying to project, and how frequently they shop is another important thing. And what do they buy and how do they buy? Do they buy in-store, online, in a mall, in freestanding? retail center, like how, how does your actual consumer buy? And by learning all about your target market, you can assure that you're 
when you purchase merchandise that you will buy the merchandise that your target market is looking for and then you'll also know how to market these products to your consumer. Next is step six and this is where you want to analyze the competition and to do this you need to understand both the direct and indirect competition for your business and direct competitors are businesses that offer the, essentially the same products or services as you and indirect competitors offer different products or services that might meet the same need or want. So if you are a boutique that sells kids clothes, your indirect competitor would be Old Navy and Target because they do sell kids clothes, but they don't sell more high-end or exclusive brands. And you'll want to develop a competitive matrix to compare your business to the competition on price range, products, quality, unique features, distribution system, marketing, location, and then strengths and weaknesses. And this is what you'll actually do for your discussion. And you'll need at least two direct competitors if they're available in the market and the rest can be indirect competitors. And I think I just have you do three competitors. So the best way to do this is going to probably do to um, go online if they have annual reports if they're a big company or to also go do mystery shopping. And understanding the competition gives you opportunities to gain a competitive advantage over the competition, which I've kind of mentioned before. And way, things that you can gain an advantage over are price and providing products before others and your customer service levels. And when looking at the competition, you need to look at what are the major companies in the industry, how many new firms have entered the market in the past five years, what new products have been introduced in the past few years, and what do competitors compete on? Do they compete on price, selection, prestige, customer service? And you need to also look at how difficult it is to enter the market. How much money are you going to have to have up front? How much marketing are you going to have to do? How much stock are you going to have to carry? All those different aspects. So continuing to look at analyzing the competition, another thing that you can also do is a SWOT analysis. And this is great to do a SWOT analysis against your most significant competitor. This will help you anticipate what to do if a new business enters the market. And a SWOT analysis looks at your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And it provides a way to identify those for your business when compared to the competition. So looking at strengths. Strengths are the attributes that give the business a competitive advantage over the competition. And they in could, could include better customer service, a better location, better prices, more selection, or exclusive products. Weaknesses are the attributes that may limit the ability to perform well against the competition. So weaknesses could be your location, if you don't get a great location. Um, they could be that you may not have exclusive products that another competitor has. Um, opportunities are the possibilities of new or improved products that current competitors are not delivering. And threats are external conditions that may have a negative impact on you. So this could be the economy, um, shifts in buying behavior, changes in the way that people shop. And once you learn your strengths and your opportunities, you're going to focus on these. And you want to position yourself in the market based on your strengths and your opportunities. Next is step seven. And this looks at the supply chain and distribution channels and how they affect the opportunity to enter a market. Um, limited supply of an item can create demand. And supply chainers are the companies that provide the materials and equipment needed to manufacture the products as well as produce the goods. Supply chain and distribution channels can affect the success of your business because if there's only a few sources that you can use to find products, this will, tends to make you pay higher costs for those products and it'll affect what you can charge and how often you can get the products. So you'll need to investigate your supply options and the cost of items and availability and what products are out there that you can get. You also need to look at distribution channels, which are how you get the product to the consumer. 
They can be selling direct to the manufacturer. They can be owning a retail operation, which is what most of you will do. They can be a wholesale business, or they can be the ultimate consumer. And you could even have a wholesale business and a retail business if you had your own specific products. And it also looks at selling through either the store, online, through a catalog, or through television. And if you target more than one customer, you might distribute your product to them differently. Looking at step eight, this is where you're going to research your location. And your location can be the single most important variable to consider when determining um, your business. And you want a location with an optimum level of traffic. You want it close to your competitors. And you need to also look at the cost of the location compared to the location to your customers. So if there's a lot of foot traffic, you're probably going to pay a lot more for that location. And you have to determine, you know, is it worth the amount of traffic that you're going to get to pay the higher cost. Also, you need to look into restrictions on signage that will either hinder, that could potentially hinder your advertising to your business. So where is your sign? How big is your sign? Is it easy to see for your consumers? And um, you can learn more about a location from a commercial realtor in the, um, the town that you're looking at. For step nine, you want to analyze your, the information that you've found, and this is market analysis. And this is the last step that you do in the um, marketing plan. And you need to analyze the market research objectively. And this is an evaluation of the conditions of a market. And it considers all the information obtained through the market research and describes the history and potential future of the market. And this is an important step because of this process affects all of your business decisions that you will make from here on out. Uh, a few other things that we need to look at that deal with your marketing plan are um, seasonal patterns of merchandise that you carry and the geographic area where you live. So for example, in College Station, you're not going to need to carry very many heavy coats, but in Lubbock, where y'all live, you would need to carry heavy coats for winter. Also, in College Station, you wear summer clothes earlier than other markets and then later in other markets. So here, you can start wearing more summer clothes or spring clothes um, into March. You can start wearing shorts and then you can usually go all the way till November. Also, another example would be if you want to carry cocktail dresses, you need to realize that if that's kind of your main thing is high-end dresses, that they're mainly going to sell around the winter holiday time and the prom time, um, times of year, and so you need to learn how are you going to deal with your stock, you know, when are you going to get new items in, you want to have them coming in during those specific times of the year, but more say your summertime, you, you could really go down on your stock, have your big sales, and try to get rid of the inventory, so those are another thing that you need to look at. And you can create an annual chart showing your monthly sales as a percentage for each merchandise area. And this is, an example of this is table 3.1 in your book, and it just shows you how you kind of chart out your monthly sales as a percentage of sales. You also want to look at cyclical patterns, and they're also important to look at because they affect the retail industry. And what they are is reoccurring swings that move the, the business activity, its sales, its cash flow, and profits from a downside to an upswing or vice versa. And to do to look at these patterns, you need to look at the economic change and changes in disposable income of your consumers. Another thing that you need to look at within your marketing plan is the impact of technology. And technology affects the raw materials you use, the methods used to produce products, the speed with which products can be delivered to the market, and the way in which sales information can be handled and how consumers can purchase. Um, online retailing has really, with that technology, has really changed the way things are done because you can order products 24-7. It is also important to stay up with technology trends to determine which ones are important for you to implement and which ones are not. And the last thing to look at that within your marketing plan is the financial patterns. And these are standards and norms that are used to determine pricing, to evaluate your merchandise performance, and 
to help you specify the billing terms that you'll use. And knowledge of financial standards within the industry is critical in helping you accurately develop your financial plans for your business. And industry standards can be found at Hoover's and Standards and Poor's. And also startup expenses and monthly budgets for your inventory payment and profit potential are all locked into industry financial standards. So you really need to figure out what are the financial standards just to determine, you know, financially, how many expenses are am I going to have? How, what do I need to budget monthly for inventory? And also to learn your profit potential. And you need to know your profit to, potential to make sure of all the costs that you're going to have up front that those are going to turn into an actual profit in the future. And that you'll have enough consumers to ensure a profit. And this concludes chapter three.